The pancreas has two main functions. Uh, it makes enzymes to aid in digestion, and it also makes uh, a, a variety of hormones, most common one being insulin, uh, which allows normal blood sugar control. No one really knows the cause of pancreatic cancer. The vast majority of patients, probably in the range of 75 uh, plus percent of patients with pancreas cancer, uh, have a sporadic, it's in those patients, it's a sporadic event. The etiology is not uh, at all clear uh, and essentially uh, bad luck. Uh, the symptoms of the disease vary with where in the pancreas the tumor develops. Uh, pancreatic cancer can develop anywhere throughout the pancreas. If the cancer develops in the head of the pancreas near the bile duct, it may obstruct the bile duct, which would then result in a visible appearance of jaundice. Uh, the whites of the eyes become yellow, the skin color darkens, uh, the urine becomes darker, the stools become much lighter. Those patients then go to the doctor because there is an obvious problem. So one can appreciate how a cancer, if strategically located next to the bile duct, may actually cause the patient to come to diagnosis when it still is relatively small, as opposed to a cancer that's not in, in uh, proximity to the bile duct, in which case the patient would not come to the doctor when the cancer is small. The cancer would have to get larger uh, in order for that patient to then become symptomatic. Pancreatic cancer tends to spread, spread early to other parts of the body. So if not caught when it is relatively small, it is oftentimes associated with uh, what we would term metastatic disease or spread to other parts of the body, most commonly the liver, occasionally the lining of the abdomen, and occasionally the lung. Typically, if a patient uh, presents when they're jaundiced and they have bile duct obstruction, they would uh, frequently get an ultrasound first to determine is that a gallstone, which has caused the obstruction of the bile duct, and where, in fact, is the bile duct block. After the ultrasound, the uh, cornerstone of staging is a CT scan. One can also use an MRI, but that provides cro what we would term cross-sectional imaging of that part of the body. So we can get a clear view of the tumor, and, it, and most importantly, its relationship to surrounding organs and blood vessels. At Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin, we have uh, instituted now a, um, a standard evaluation for pancreatic cancer patients that largely can be completed in 48 to 72 hours. So uh, the entire evaluation and staging process can be done in, in two to three days. The patient is then presented at our multidisciplinary conference on Friday morning and then the best possible treatment uh, is then initiated the following week. The staging system for all solid tumors is a four-part staging system. I was chairman of the uh, committee that revised the staging system that is used throughout the world. What was done for pancreas cancer and was mirrored for all other solid tumors is basically that stage four is a cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. Typically, there would be little role for surgical removal of the primary tumor if it is already spread to other parts of the body. Um, stage three is uh, commonly referred to as a locally advanced uh, non-metastatic cancer. So one that is, uh, for whatever reason, too large to be surgically excised, but has not yet spread to another part of the body. And stage one and two are uh, various versions of surgically removable tumors that have not spread to another part of the body. Surgery is part of the program for stage one and two uh, pancreatic cancer and selected patients with stage three disease. Patients with stage three and stage four pancreatic cancer are typically treated with chemotherapy first. Stage four patients, that tends to be the only treatment modality along typically along the lines of clinical trials. With stage three disease, oftentimes radiation follows chemotherapy in the treatment program. Uh, uh, myself and uh, many others uh, uh, strongly favor a surgery last strategy in those patients who have uh, the largest and most complex uh, tumor anatomy where the risk of the surgery is greater. Uh, in those patients, we want to select them very carefully for a more high-risk operation. So typically, 
they would receive chemotherapy with or without radiation first and then be considered for surgery, thereby selecting those patients most likely to benefit from a big, higher-risk operation. The problem with a surgery-first strategy is that we delay the delivery of chemotherapy, uh, and in most patients, the cancer has spread outside the pancreas, even at a microscopic level, uh, uh, if not a macroscopic level. Let me review treatment options in general. I think um, uh, for, for patients who are diagnosed with cancer, in, in a more general sense, uh, they can be treated on a clinical trial or off of a clinical trial. For patients with localized, potentially uh, removable, or the term we use in, in, in the medical world is resectable pancreatic cancer, the treatment options include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery, or a combination of all of these. As I mentioned, the clinical trial work that I've done in the past has, uh, has demonstrated that chemotherapy with radiation prior to surgery has distinct, clear benefits. And there are many physicians now around the United States who would prefer that type of overall treatment strategy for patients with uh, resectable or borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. Because resectable tumors tend to be more common in the pancreatic head because they have obstructed the bile duct, causing the patient to present when the tumor is smaller, the operation for removal of the pancreatic head is termed the Whipple procedure. The technical term is pancreaticoduodenectomy because the pancreatic head is formed embryologically with the duodenum, the distal bile duct, uh, and, the, and the very end of the stomach. That whole area embryologically was uh, developed as one unit, so it needs to be removed as a unit. Pancreatic head cancers that, uh, that are adjacent to uh, or inseparable from the vein that goes from the intestine to the liver pose a common problem that surgeons have been uh, dealing with now for uh, approximately three or four decades. In the, uh, in the 80s, uh, it was in general felt that a cancer that was inseparable from that vein was one that could not be removed. In the 90s, uh, myself and uh, others uh, largely in Europe have popularized removal of that vein and reconstructing it, uh, typically with a vein from another part of the body. So now that procedure is relatively routine at some institutions. For example, uh, Fredert and the Medical College of Wisconsin, removal of the superior mesenteric or portal vein is a, uh, is a routine procedure as part of a pancreaticoduodenectomy or a Whipple procedure. In other institutions, it can be um, much more controversial. Institutions that have a, a greater experience uh, in taking care of cancer patients uh, tend to have better outcomes, and that certainly is true for uh, surgical procedures. Uh, again, it's important to emphasize that surgery is only one piece of the uh, of an important treatment program and really the most effective treatment program for this disease. And that's a treatment program that involves both chemotherapy, uh, oftentimes radiation therapy, and surgery. Um, at Fredert and the Medical College of Wisconsin, uh, we have a state-of-the-art state of the art cancer center that is an absolutely gorgeous facility uh, that allows medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, and surgeons all to work in the same location. And that, uh, that constant interaction allows us to develop innovative clinical trials and allows us all to participate um, in a very meaningful way uh, into the care of the patient. And in order to achieve consensus on how to treat patients and in order to keep innovation and discovery at the foremost uh, uh, aspect of our treatment programs, you need to have a clinical trial program. In order to do that, you need to have a critical mass and you need to have all specialties represented. So I think in, in the United States, uh, over the next decade, um, very difficult diseases to treat, such as pancreas cancer, and those that um, have a relatively modest incidence but a very high mortality, the treatment of those patients will probably begin to be segregated to those large centers like this where you have uh, scientists, clinicians, and all the specialties represented.